Why do we meat eaters come out with so many rituals and complicated ways of cooking meat? It is because we want to look sophisticated and distance ourselves of the primitive past, or it's because it's better? You have no idea how many times I ask this question to myself, and if you've been paying attention to the videos, you know that I'm leaning in a certain way. Yep, you heard me. And today I'm going to test this myself with you guys as witnesses. As you know, I'm a basic guy that tries to separate himself from other people by giving my unbiased opinion and suggestions to common problems we all meat lovers find every day, and this one has been bugging me for a while. So the idea is really simple. We have these two beautiful steaks here and we're going to treat them both exactly the same way before we cook them. One of these beauties will be cooked exactly as we always do, on the indirect heat until it reaches the desired internal temperature and then we sear it. I will allow its internal temperature to gradually rise to 120 degrees before doing anything with it. I will not touch it or flip it or do anything else. And as you might know, this is the contemporary way of cooking steaks. With this other steak, we're going to go a little bit primal. We're going to be cooking this baby exactly as humans has been doing for thousands of years, over the fire. Cooking on fire is an art that has been perfected for thousands of years, until we decided to complicate things a lot, just for the sake of it. Yes, there is going to be flames and some flares, and that's part of it. There is nothing more flavorful to me on a steak than those little burns that taste like all the flavors were put into it. Now I should tell you this, cooking over fire requires a lot of attention. You have to be actively involved with the cook and keep looking and making little adjustments to perfect the sear. This might sound like something that people is not interested at all, but I tell you this man, I like it a lot. I'm not cooking like this every day, but I'm the kind of person that likes to focus on what I do. And when I'm in the sun, I'm constantly checking my meat, making sure that everything is coming up the way I want it to be. That is part of the love we all put in the cooking, and that is, in my point of view, what makes all the difference in what the final product is. Of course, this is something that I would not recommend to you if you have a party at home or you have visits at home, because you will have to be cooking and interacting with people at the same time. This is more what I do when I'm cooking for my family, and I want them to enjoy each bite they take as much as possible. And that is what makes all the difference between a mediocre steak and an amazing one. Well, it's time to get back to the cook. As always, I will be putting salt and pepper on the steaks and let them rest at room temperature for about 30 minutes while I get the grill going. This meat was provided by the Argentinian Cut. Check the description for more information. And while you're looking to that fire and those beautiful flames, I think it is a good time to ask you to subscribe if you haven't, and remember to hit that like button. Once my grill is ready, I will set the first steak on the grill and let it cook until it's time to sear it. This will normally take about 20 minutes, but it varies, so keep a thermometer at hand. With the internal temperature of the steak at 120 degrees, it is time to sear it. This will take me about 2 minutes per side, but don't allow that to limit you. You sear it until it looks as beautiful as you want it to look. With the other steak, I will get my coils to the max, and at that time I will put it over the fire. We want this meat to cook as evenly as possible, so make sure you create a nice bed of coils and don't have any cold spots on it. The idea here is to keep an eye on the steak and move it around if needed. Do not walk away from it as it can result in disaster. Once you see your steak uses coming out from the top or sweating, as I like to call it, give it a flip and do the same thing on the other side. Well, Miss Ninja, we have another experiment here today for you to try. Okay. And I want to know if you feel any difference on the flavors at all. This is okay. a good experiment. I mean, I've been after this experiment for a long time, and I really want to test this thing up and see what's up. So, we have number A and we have number B, okay? This time it's like that, so you guys are... <laughs> yeah. All right, Miss Ninja, let's go with number A. Number A. 
Mm. Really good. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Wow. You know what I taste? Besides the beef and it's beefy, it's real good. <laughs> the wood. Wow, it's good guys. Love it. Intense flavor, really beefy because mm -hmm. it's the Argentinian beef. If you want to know about these steaks or the Argentinian cuts and everything, just check the description below. We have all the information on there. Now it's time to give a try to number B. B! Let's see if number B is different, man. Yes, sir. We have number B here. Ooh, you got a little piece in here. Mm. Take it, take it, take it. Give me my PC. There you go. Ready? All mm. right, Mason. Yeah, let's go for let's it. Let's go. Mm, 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 wow. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Strong flavor, Very really strong. beefy. Way more tender. A little bit more tender than the other one. No, wait, no, I'm just telling you about that. Okay, a little a, bit more tender. A little bit more tender than the other one. And a really good, good, good flavor, guys. So, Miss Ninja, which is going to be your favorite? Number B. Number B is Miss Ninja favorite, and number <laughs> B is my favorite too, because number B is delicious, bro. And sisters. Wow, number B is amazing, guys. <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a long time. I've been cooking on the fire for a little bit, guys, and I've been so impressed with the flavors, the wood, the smokiness, the, the, the intensity of the flavor. Yes, Some little burns area there that are really tasty and really nice. And I would really recommend to you guys because cooking over fire is something different. So this one is straight in the fire. This one is cooking over fire. This one is reverse here, which is the one that we always do. Nothing wrong with that one. No. That one is awesome. But, but this, this one, one is super awesome. <laughs> because it has those little burns areas. Yep. It tastes amazing. Well, guys, let me ask you something. If we made you hungry, please hit us with the like. Lots of lots of likes. Subscribe to the channel. Share with your friends yes. and family. And don't forget to share these videos on your social network because that helps <laughs> us a lot. That's all for today. I'm pretty sure you're going to have a lot of questions about it. It is a little more difficult. I don't want to say that it's easier. I just saying that it tastes a little better. You have to be on top of it. You have to be controlling the fire. You have to be moving the steak. You have to be doing a lot of little things that you won't do if you cook it in the in the regular way. But man, it's so yeah. worth it. If you have any question, anything you want to say, any argument, man, put it down there in the comments. Yes, That's what it is for. So. And remember that I love you. Mm, we love you. Thanks for watching, and see you on the next one. A comer. A comer.